Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. The mink project is in full swing right now. We're having a great time out here working with Joseph and we're getting ready to start the excavation. Once we do that excavation, take all of that soil we dig out from the pond and I'm gonna bury our biofall system. That biofalls is a critical component because it helps us to detoxify the water. The other thing that I wanna do on this particular project is coming up with an interactive system for his mink. So we wanna recreate a muskrat den that he could use to help to train his mink, which is really, really cool. Haven't done anything like this, so I'm looking forward to this project. <laughs> so we're at five, five and a half almost, so a little bit extra. That's safe as good. Perfect. That'll also give them nice access along that back edge for maintenance. All right, so Ralph and Steven are over here strapping rocks. Mark and I are setting them. AJ's operating. And we are waiting on our all delivery right, all right. of all the other pond components, the liner, biofilter. But we have plenty of work here to do this morning in setting some of these rocks and then starting the excavation. All right, Ralph, you want to give us a little tutorial here on what you're doing? Strapping up these boulders, so a lot of different styles of uh, strapping and straps. We're strapping young men, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. So, so this is going to be our top. Now, what we're going to do is get our loops there towards the top, and we're going to have that strap right towards the outside of the edge. So when we place that boulder where we want it, it's nice and easy to get those straps up. And there are different types of straps. So this is an eye to eye which is a little bit different than the continuous loops, obviously. I like to work with the continuous loop. That's my favorite. I also like the one inch style. This is a one inch double strap, you know, double thickness. This can handle a lot of weight and it's nice and easy to work with to get into tight spaces. The big two inch, that's really good for bigger boulders, but we don't have boulders that really justify having to use this. So this is much easier, much faster, more efficient working with the, with the thinner straps. We got the first section excavated out. We have our intake bay on the far end. That is to act as a skimmer system to collect debris. Everything else is gonna be pretty standardized, but we are modifying some of our construction practices because of the particular uh, type of animal. So what I love about this is we're doing a series of pools, and this is gonna be that deep section. This is gonna be up to 24 inches deep. We're gonna have a pool up in here, which is gonna be approximately 12 inches deep pool up there is going to be six inches deep so we'll have different zones for different ages of the animals ralph is checking our elevations right now to see what our depth is at so i'm going to remark this section uh, then we'll start the excavation over here continue working our way up to the top and then hopefully all the pond products show up here soon So Mark and I are gonna run over to a local pipe supply place to pick up some more materials. We're gonna create that interactive system for the mink, which is gonna be really, really cool. It's gonna make all the difference in the world on this particular project. So while we're gone, AJ, Ralph, and Steven, they're gonna start staging some of the rocks. So as soon as our liner gets here and all the other components, we'll be able to start putting everything together. So we're trying to keep everything productive as much as we can throughout the day. It's turned out to be an incredible project. I love the progress we've made. We got our retaining wall in. Excavation is done, elevations are set, we're ready for the next step. So here's my thought process for the uh, interactive area for the mink. What I'm thinking of is doing kind of a modified system like we normally do for our fish caves. But in this application, what we want to do is we're going to have a series of underwater tunnels. Again, this is looking at the ponds. Let me describe this out a little bit. So here's going to be our excavation. And then our pumps are going to be over in this corner, shallow spot here. This is going to kind of be the deep zone. Down at the bottom of that deep zone, I want to have a series of entry points where the mink could come into a series of pipes and tunnels leading to the den area. This would allow Joseph access to any bait or anything like that that he wants to put inside of it. 
Here's a different view. I think this one shows it a little bit better. So this is more of a cross section instead of an above view. So here's the excavation of the pond. These are these pipes coming out. And I'm gonna use a series of T's and elbows and things like that to bend the pipe around. This will allow the mink multiple access points to come into the tunnel system. And again, this is replicating how muskrats normally would burrow into the side of an actual pond system or lake or canal, whatever it happens to be. They're gonna have multiple entry points from a safety perspective. So this is really important for training those animals. Then from inside of this, this tunnel is gonna lead up into a man-made den, which is made to replicate an actual muskrat den. Uh, we'll have like a locking lid or something like this, but this will be on the outside perimeter of the water. Here's going to be our rubber liner. Water level is going to be set like right over about in here. This is going to be a really, really cool component, and this is what's making this project really unique and a lot of fun. So all of our products arrived. We have our pump vault. The pump vault area has been excavated out. You can see the vault sitting right over here. It's gonna go in the back corner. We have our heavy duty geotextile fabric. Remember, this is the really, really thick stuff. And this is the material that I use on heavy duty applications. Anytime I'm working with animals that could be burrowing or digging, anytime I'm setting really large rocks, this is very inexpensive insurance that's gonna help protect the liner. The other nice thing about this is this material resists stretching and pulling. It increases the load bearing capacity of the soil. Actually, the soil here is pretty soft, which is very good for excavation, but it's not great for setting large boulders on. So by putting this heavy duty fabric, that's gonna spread the weight out over a larger area. And we're going to sandwich the rubber liner in between two layers of this material. It's gonna help, uh, help this project last for many, many decades. And that's exactly what we're looking for. The rubber liner itself is guaranteed for 20 years from degradation. We're covering it completely up so we shouldn't have any issues at all. So our next steps right now, we are going to come in, we're going to cut the rubber membrane. We have two pieces. We have one coming this way and we have another one coming up in this direction. We're going to be doing a seam right in here and that's because this section is going to be just below the water level. But what I want to show you is great. the intake bay. Uh, so the intake bay over here, this is going to act as our pre-filter and skimmer system. So this is a modified system that's going to help us deliver desired water quality as well as protect the mink. All right, okay. uh, Ralph, good. what are you up to over here? I'm doing some a little custom plumbing because we're going to have a series of tunnels going uh, through the rock work for the mink to uh, train. And apparently some of the uh, critters that get in there, they'll leave some dead fish and things like that. So we want a way to flush that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this T in there and we'll be able to divert pressure into that tunnel system and blow that out so it doesn't become uh, stagnant in there. After that, we're going to continue with our plumbing through the liner. So that will happen with a bulkhead fitting. Then we'll just run this flex two inch line over to our biofalls and be flowing. So here's our Biofall 6000. This is an upflow biological filter. We have two of our bulkhead fittings down here in the bottom. Remember those uh, create that watertight seal against anything. The nice thing about them is they have a soft neoprene gasket that's going to give us the desired compression and then it is threaded. I'll show you what that looks like. So it has an internal thread that's going to allow us to adapt it to our piping system. So we have multiple ports coming in. You could bring in two pumps. You could set one of them up for a drainage system. On this particular one, we just have a cap on the one side and then our inflow on the other. You can see this is kind of an oval shape. There's a sedimentation chamber down here on the bottom. So we're going to have fast moving water coming in, but it's coming in not perfectly square or anything, but it's going to create a swirling motion. So that's a swirl chamber and it allows the sedimentation process to occur. So that sedimentation zone is going to build up on the bottom. If you ever clean one of these things out, you're going to find an inch or two of sediments down on the bottom. So once that uh, large sediment has filtered out, the water is then going to flow up through the different layers of filter media. It's going to come up through our bio balls. You could also put activated carbon in here to really polish the water. On the top edge over here, which is really kind of a nice design, we have built in a what we call a rock tray. So that allows us to bring in boulders, river rock and things like that if we want to get additional plantings. So one of the critical components about this is the water as it comes out of here 
This is uh, going to make a watertight seal here. So you can see we have this uh, nice flat front. We have a series of these threaded inserts in the front. What we're going to do is we're going to create a compression right in here, clean all this off. We're going to take our rubber liner, we'll sandwich it up against it, and we'll put holes through and we'll put in the series of screws with silicone sealant and that's going to create a watertight seal for us. So the beauty about this is it's going to be a nice solid connection for our liner, it's going to connect into our waterfall. But the other important part of this from a design as well as functional standpoint is the biofalls is responsible for oxygenating the water. So as the water flows up through the filter media, the dissolved oxygen is consumed by all the microorganisms that are living inside of the filter media. So this is gonna be a whole colony of living animals living inside of it. So we wanna replenish the oxygen naturally, and that is through a series of cascading waterfalls that are gonna make their way all the way back down to the pumping system. So we are working on a little interactive system for the mink. So like I was saying earlier, they are normally found in riparian habitats. So there's all types of pockets and holes and boulders and all that type of stuff. And in, inside and in between all those things, there's typically going to be animals. Crayfish, there's going to be frogs. The mink are going to uh, want to search those things out because that's what they feed off of naturally. So talking with Joseph, we came up with this idea to create this little tunnel system that's going to be behind our boulders. So we have four inch pipe. This is going to have open coming out in between the boulders. Actually, my favorite part is going to be this section up here. We're going to replicate a muskrat den. One of our faux stumps located up here on the top, that's going to actually be the den. We're going to bring this piping system up. We're going to 90 it over into that little den. We're going to have a little shutoff valve in between. So what Joseph can do for training, he could open or close that valve when he wants to train the mink to go inside of this to search out and look for some of the different food. The project update, we are installing our large boulders now down on the very bottom. We're also disguising piping system that we're putting in all the way along uh, the, the bottom of the pond over here. But everything is looking really good right now. We're at a good place to end the first day. We got everything excavated. We have our intake bay in. We got our liner in place. We did our seam, bio filters installed. We built our retaining wall. We started shaping the berm. So we got a ton of stuff done today. And the day is not totally over yet because what we are doing is going to be really really cool we are going to go out this evening with joseph he's going to bring one of his mink out and we're going to go hunting with it totally looking forward to this and it's going to give us a little glimpse of how these animals actually interact with water so stay tuned <music> 